Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I have a uh, another mailbox item. Um, you can see here it came from Canada, uh, $50 Canadian and I'd like to thank everyone for uh, for helping me uh, buy this. Uh, basically the links I've been posting below for eBay affiliate program uh, have been helping pay for this. I saved up some money and this is what I decided to purchase. I already filmed this before and my camera phone crashed and I lost the footage so I'm really sorry I can't show you my first experience but I'll go through what exactly happened so without further ado it came in this nice little uh, game container that can fit uh, different types of games and this is not something that I normally buy I, I normally would risk my money on but this is special uh, because it's something that um, I've always wanted, but I never thought I'd be able to afford on my own. Uh, because these go for well over $100 normally. Because of their age, they tend to have some damage or not working or are very expensive if they're in good working condition. And this is it. It is a Game & Watch Octopus game. Um, in pretty good physical condition. There's some dust I need to clean off. There's a little bit of uh, marking damage on the the metal bezel, but I can live with that. The uh, rest of it's in pretty good physical condition. Uh, however, when I first got this, it came with the two coin cell batteries and I measured the voltage and those were fine it was like 2.4 2.5 volts however the unit would not turn on or respond at all so what I ended up doing was opening it up so I wish I could show you I wish my my memory card didn't crash and I wish I didn't lose the footage but I did so I'm just gonna go through it once again open this guy up and show you the inside and uh, yeah, explain to you kind of what I observed. So basically, six screws. Um, it's a flathead, so just get in there and I'll undo these. Okay, so once you guys are in, what you're going to have to do is, uh, there's a catch on this side, you have to kind of lift it from the left hand side and wiggle it until it comes off. Don't pull it off straight away because there's wires leading from the main board to the piezo speaker. And you can see the main board here is just a simple quad fat, flat pack, uh, a crystal oscillator for it, and some capacitors and passives and whatnot. Interestingly enough, they put a uh, diode across the piezo. Usually you would do that on an inductive load if you're driving it, uh, not usually a capacitive load like a piezo. Anyway, so yeah, there are four screws here, and someone's kindly been in here before already because they scratched the, uh, the phenolic PCB where the inner screws go, which is actually pretty helpful because there's no other markings. The later ones have a white circle silk screen to show you where the inner screws go. These are a different size, size than the case uh, screws. The case screws are actually longer, so you want to keep these separate because if you put the case screws in here, it'll actually probably damage the front bezel and poke through and uh, deform the metal and plastic. So that would be very bad. Okay, first thing I'd noticed was uh, the batteries are kind of grimy. Uh, it looks like they had leaked a little bit. So um, what I ended up doing was taking some isopropyl alcohol, like such, and just rubbing off the contacts. And I tried it again, and still nothing. So there's something obviously deeper wrong with it. So what I ended up doing was uh, unscrewing everything and pulling this board out. Being very ginger with it. And here you can see the board. Uh, interestingly enough, the background image is on a acetate sheet, uh, like such. However, yeah, you can see here, um, if I get in close, there you go, you can see that there's some corrosion around this battery. These are alkaline batteries, and after a while they do tend to leak. 
and it's uh, rather unfortunate, but they do they can corrode. So right here, the corrosion actually got underneath the uh, it was like a solder mask uh, to protect the board, and it kind of ate away a little bit here. Uh, but I tested it. There's a like a via underneath the LCD, and I tested it with a multimeter, and the battery was connected to that. However, when I tested, uh, so then next I tested, I could see the trace goes over here to the button ground. Tested that to that, and I beeped it out with the multimeter, and that was connected. Then when I measured, I can see the trace goes underneath uh, here to the ground of the system, which is uh, on the negative side of this capacitor here. Thank you. And so I measured between the ground of here to here, and I got nothing. And just to be sure, I measured from the ground of the battery here over to here, and I got nothing. So I knew that this very thin trace here, you can barely see it, is actually corroded and eaten through completely. So there was some um, corrosion here as well, and I just took some isopropyl alcohol and cleaned it off so that the button would work. Uh, but what I ended up doing was uh, soldering this wire and uh, I'll show you guys in, the, in a second of me doing that. The footage for that, fortunately, was not lost. Uh, but unfortunately, the footage of the surprise unveiling and me uh, tinkering around with it and nothing working and then me finally saying, okay, I'm you know going to go through and debug this in real time. Unfortunately, that was lost. But, you know, what can you do? Okay, so I just got a weird error about my uh, recording failing. Hopefully the first part of this was not ruined. Uh, that would suck. Anyway, so yeah, here we are. And um, I already pre-stripped a little tiny little piece of wire. This isn't very high current or anything, so I'm just going to, you know, just use a tiny little 30 gauge wire. That should be good enough. So I don't really have a brush or anything to... Yeah. Yeah, just grab a little bit of flux since these are very old solder pads. Uh, it might be kind of hard to get solder to stick. So I'm just rubbing a little tiny bit of flux on the pads that I want to solder. Steady hands. Oh, God, this is going to be horrible. I'm trying to not touch the screen and uh, move my hand away from the camera. I had to add a little bit of solder to that, actually. Okay, just started flowing. Get this wire there. Incidentally, I am uh, performing this mod on the release day of the uh, Nintendo Switch. <laughs> so yeah, um, kind of relevant, don't you think? Uh, it's essentially their first portable uh, handheld gaming system. I'm fixing on the day that they're releasing their first portable slash home system. This might need some solder on there, too. Yeah, this solder is kind of crusty. Well, figure this was released in 1982, I believe. So this is older than I am. Yeah, there we go. And before closing her up, we'll do a quick test. So, geez, all that coffee that I just had is not helping with the shaky hands. Okay. Shut off the iron so I don't burn a hole in anything. Okay, where are my batteries here? Let's get the front of the case and put her back in and do a dry run. Okay, I don't even know if these batteries are good or not. So it's about 2.48. I don't know what the cutoff voltage of this is, so it might or might not work, but it doesn't hurt to try. Oh my goodness. So... I just fixed a Game & Watch. I think this ended up costing me about $30 uh, with shipping in addition to that. So it ended up being like $35 or $36. 
uh, but you can see that it works perfectly. The screen is a little grubby. I'm probably going to take some isopropyl and carefully clean that. But look at that. Works. So for pretty much less than a third of the price of one in, in this roughly good condition, I mean, there's some damage, but not that much, actually, given how old this is. But yeah, it works perfectly. Let's uh, screw this back together and maybe have a game. Okay, so all back together. Let's put these batteries in and close the lid. This is in very good physical condition for its age. Wow. Uh, it's a little bit dim, uh, probably because the batteries were only like 2.5 instead of 3 volts. But oh, I'm setting the time. Uh, what time is it? I don't even know. It is 8.52 p.m. Okay. So, yeah, you can see. Look at that. That is beautiful. Let's just get right in there. Yeah, with the brand new set of batteries, this would look... It looks a little, you know, ghosty image looking sort of thing. But, yeah, in person, it's uh, decent. I can see, I don't know if it's uh, damage to the LCD, but some of the black areas look a little bit, I don't know, like there's uh, some speckles of ink missing or something, but you know, I, I can't really tell if that's the LCD or not. But anyway, yeah, so let's play a game, uh, game A. I suck. <laughs> Oh, get out of there! Yay! So, yeah, uh, I can keep playing this until I lose. But anyway, you guys can see everything works. Speaker works. A little stand pops out. I had no idea this was a stand before, but yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Oh, oops, I'm losing without even trying. Anyway, yeah, it's very interesting how simple of a game... Yeah, I'm just purposefully losing real quick. Yeah, that's my excuse. But it's uh, interesting how uh, simple of a game... While well, I'm interrupted by the beeping, is uh, is fun to play and is still fun to play uh, even now. Oh yeah, okay. So you have to, you can't quit halfway through a game. Apparently, I, I never knew that. But yeah, after you lose a game, then you can hit time, and then it goes back to this mode where it just sits there and tells the time. So yeah, interesting that they added this little door or leg to hold it up. But yeah, you can see everything works. I can press and hold this, and it shows a little alarm octopus, and this is what my alarm time is, and this is what the current time is. Yeah, that is pretty snazzy. Uh, let's do a quick little comparison between this and the uh, the Game Boy kind of uh, Game & Watch collection series that I have. So here's the uh, Game & Watch gallery, and let me just crank up that contrast. And this is my RGB uh, Game Boy, backlight Game Boy with Bivert that I've done. Let's, uh... yeah, there you go. So we can see, let's enter that, we'll go to Octopus. And we'll go to the modern version and just do a quick visual comparison. I love the, the music in this. Hopefully this doesn't get a copyright strike, but anyway... You can see that it's a little bit different. Uh, for instance, I'm able to stand kind of in between two of the legs, which I don't think I was able to in here, and that was causing me to lose. Anyway, uh, so let's just get out of this and go to classic mode. And there you go. Pretty much a one-to-one -one reproduction. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for uh, watching. I guess that's it. I'm just going to go through on my own time and clean all the contacts and make sure it's uh, I get all the dust out and there's some crud in there. Clean the filters with isopropyl. And this will be added to my personal collection and very proudly added on display. And 
I'm gonna spend some time playing with it because uh, I'm I'm pretty good at the uh, the Game Boy uh, recreative version, but I need to get some practice on the real article, the uh, authentic article, so to speak. So yeah, this is really awesome. I've never held one before. There's a little bit of damage to the uh, the serial number, but eh. It's kind of hard not to, but yeah, if you guys uh, can see here, model number OC22. Uh, three volts, <laughs> it draws, uh, not even one uh, milliamp, or milliwatt, sorry, which is tiny. It uses LR43 uh, or SR43, uh, even though this came with um, uh, 44s in there, so it's it's a little bit of a tight fit. I normally wouldn't recommend using that. I'm probably just going to get uh, original batteries or do a modification where I can, st if there's enough room inside, I can stick a, uh, a CR2032 in there and kind of rewire it in such a way that it's reversible, just like twist some wires onto there it's so that this could get much better battery life as well as the fact that CR um, lithium batteries tend not to leak, uh, not nearly as bad as these alkaline batteries. Yeah, you can see there... Uh, uh, copyright Nintendo Co. That was before they switched just to Nintendo. It was Nintendo Company Limited, 1981, patent pen, pending, made in Japan. All the best stuff is made in Japan. Uh, Marty McFly was right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and this was my repair video. I'm surprised it was that easy. Literally, it took me like 15, 20 minutes from opening it, uh, including time situating the camera and everything and stripping the wire but yeah now I have a working Game & Watch Octopus in very nice physical condition so I'd like to thank everyone once again for making this possible this isn't normally something I would buy on my own uh, because you know 30 or 40 bucks for something that doesn't work um, that's this old is kind of risky um, but yeah definitely because uh, I had that certificate um, I thought why not and this would make a really cool video and I think it did Okay, just a uh, quick little addendum, if I can... Yeah, there we go. You can see now the uh, weird speckling on the LCD is gone. At, like, it's completely normal now. The only thing that I did was I reopened it and I cleaned everything out thor thoroughly. The polarizing filter, the LCD, whatever. And additionally, I cleaned the battery contacts uh, a little bit better than I had before. And you can definitely see everything, the LCDs flawless so I'm definitely happy about that uh, I was a little bit worried maybe there's some uh, damage to the LCD which could not be fixed but yeah now we're all good so hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time